Hey everybody, it's Craig Beckta here from craigbeckta.com. In this Photoshop tutorial, we're going to cover the five things beginners want to know in Photoshop. Feel free to share this video on Twitter or Facebook, your blog, or anywhere on the web. Let's get started. All right, here we are in Photoshop. Let's get started. I know everybody's at a different level, so I'm going to go hopefully not too fast. If it's too fast, just rewind. Anyway, let's get started. So I have the original copy there. I've just disabled that. I just made an extra copy. And to make another copy on the Mac, it's Command J. It's quick and it's Control J on the PC. So now I have extra copies. Anyway, that's how you make a duplicate if you want to save one. All right, so we shot this with a 20 inch silver beauty dish. And it's a white background, but it looks kind of gray because of the distance that we were at. I think it was 5.6 at shutter speed 160 on the Canon 5D Mark III. Anyway, let's get started. So one of the things people want to know, let's call this the first thing people want to know, is how to remove blemishes. Now, I'm going to zoom in quite a bit. She doesn't really have too many. I'm at about 200%, which is really zoomed in. And if you get that far on anyone, you're going to notice some wrinkles, you're going to notice some blemishes, and things like that. So I'll show you quickly. There's a couple of tools that work great. There's the Spot Healing Brush, which isn't my choice normally. I usually use the next one I'm about to show you. But what this does is it just samples a nearby area and it removes the blemish. But I personally like to pick the area myself. But you can see it does a really good job. So that's the Spot Healing Brush. And if you right click over here, the Healing Brush tool. I like this because what this does is it allows me to sample nearby areas. So I'm in charge of where the sample is coming from. So I can sample a nearby area and then just work that way. And to sample, you have to press the Option key and it's the Alt key on the PC and then you would just click that area at the same time. So Option and click and then you can just kind of clean up that area. So those are a couple of tools. I'll show you one more, and it's the patch tool. Now this also works similar. You just kind of circle the area, but you can drag this to an area that you want to replace it with. So try to find a cleaner area with a similar color, and then it blends the two areas. So say we took this little highlight right there and we dragged it over, and then you've kind of smoothed that out. Now I like to do my patching on a different layer, and then that way I can use one of the blend modes here, or I can use the opacity slider to adjust that. Now to deselect, it's Command D on your keyboard or Control D on the PC. So that's the number one thing people want to know is how to remove blemishes. So those are three tools that you can use to do that. And there's other ways, but uh, you know, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so the next one, a lot of people want to know how to brighten eyes, and I do have a tutorial on this, but I'll show you a different way because there's so many different ways in Photoshop to do everything. So you could pick, say, a curves layer. Now we have our shadows down here and our highlights here. So in this top box, what I can do is just sort of increase the exposure. Now I want to put a mask on that and already there's a white mask. So if I click Command I or Control I, then that effect is taken away. So what I can do is I can paint on that mask and bring that brightness back using a white brush. So if you look over on our left, we have uh, black and white selected. If I hit the X key, I'm now on white. So if I go to a brush, I'm going to reduce my opacity to about, let's say we'll reduce it to about uh, 20. So opacity to around 20, flow to around 20. So that's at the top there. So what I'll do is zoom in, Command Plus or Control Plus on the PC. We'll just have a look at her eyes. And now we can selectively just bring in the brightness. So I'm going to pick a soft brush. So one way to do that too is just kind of come up here and say hardness, zero, okay, great. And if I want to adjust the size of the brush, I can use my bracket keys. So left bracket to go smaller. So I'm just gonna bring in some of that brightness and I'm bringing in slowly because I'm at a 20% opacity. If you feel that this is going too slow, you can increase your opacity and flow, but I don't want to bring it in too much because I want to kind of just sort of sample it. So I can turn this on and off and you can see it's just a subtle brightening. And like I said, I have another tutorial that shows you different ways to do this and add contrast. So you might want to check that out. So let's just see. What we'll do is we'll zoom out and we'll look at both her eyes. And then we can have a look and see how that worked. So now you can see this eye is brighter than the other eye. And so we could work on that. Like I said, we could erase our opacity and our flow if it's not getting bright enough fast enough for us. 
And we can do the same thing on that eye. Okay, so that's two things. That's how to remove blemishes, how to brighten eyes. Now the same effect can be used to do some brightness, say on the hair. So let's just create a different layer for that. So we'll go to curves and we'll do the same thing. We'll just bring that up. We'll say command I. And what we'll do is maybe we'll bring this up so you can see the effect a little more. So 25 and 25. I've got my soft edge brush. And let's say we want to bring this highlight up here a little bit more. So what I can do, we don't even have to zoom in that far. I can get a bigger brush. So with a bigger brush, it's going to be softer edges just because of the fact that it's a bigger brush. And then I can just sort of paint in some highlights right there. Let me just zoom out and maybe I'll just sort of enhance this highlight right here a little bit too. Kind of just bring that up a bit. And then maybe right here as her hair curves over. And then we'll just bring that up again here. So now I'm just sort of bringing up the exposure. Now if I click on and off, you can see we've just added some brightness to her hair. Now another thing people want to do too is they want to liquefy. So in order to liquefy, what I'm going to do is merge these layers up. So I'm going to hit Shift, Option, Command, E. Uh, that's also called a new stamped visible layer. So I've merged these layers together. So now I can no longer adjust the brightness on those two other layers. So that's one thing about using adjustment layers is that you can go back and adjust them if you don't like them. Whereas if I merge to this layer, then I'm kind of stuck with what I have now. All right, so I've got this. I'm just going to show you the liquify tool really quickly. And what I'm going to do is make another layer, Command J, just so that we can compare what I did in the liquify tool. All right, so here we are in liquify. And if your screen doesn't look like this, I have advanced mode checked. Now I've got a very small brush here. So what I want to do is make this brush bigger. And also sometimes what I'll do is I'll put what they call a freeze mask. So if I don't want to affect her face, then what I can do is I can freeze these facial features so that I don't distort her face that I'm just going to adjust her hair, say. Now what I can do, this is kind of handy sometimes if maybe her hair looks pretty good. So I wouldn't change a whole lot, but I'm just going to show you how this works. So I'm just going to make this brush a little bigger because I want to affect large areas. So let's say I just want to kind of give her a little more body in her hair, give her a little bit more of an 80s hairdo here. So I can sort of bring that out a bit more and I could bring this up a bit more. We could just kind of create a more symmetrical look. Now also I could use this to say push down her shoulders a bit if I thought her shoulders were up too high and if I wanted to bring in her arm a bit. And you can see with the bigger brush it works better than having little divots in somebody's body. And you'll see when you experiment with that and say I wanted to just push that shoulder back just a touch. All right, so we're going to say OK. Now watch when I click on and off. You see there were just subtle changes. Her hair got a little bigger, her arm went in there a bit. And so that's the third thing. That's a liquify tool. I think that's three. All right, so let's go with the fourth thing. Uh, one interesting thing that you can do sometimes, uh, I'm just going to create another layer is you can bring in a texture and if it's a gray background sometimes it'll just blend really easily so what i'm going to do is i'm going to import so command o should open up my dialog box if i go to my downloads i think i might have a background here well it's a messy brick background not that great but let's just try it okay so i'm going to say assign profile to that and we have this brick background so what i'm going to do is i could do a couple things i can go command a command c and I can come back here and I can create a new layer above that and say command V and it's going to say convert preserve color appearance don't convert so I'm going to say okay so we should have that brick wall now this is a smaller size than our image so normally you'd like to use a bigger size so I can say command T hold the shift key and that will hold its proportion and I could just increase the size of this now I wouldn't normally use this background because I don't think it's that attractive but that's the idea anyway. So now we have that. Now we have our blend modes. Now you can come up here and you could say soft light. You could say overlay. You could say screen. So there's different methods that you can use here. You could say hard light. So what you're really doing is looking for something that might work with this. Now that's not going to work. So let's try the multiply. Now Let's just see. So that's not looking very good right now, but we can apply a mask to this. So basically if we apply a white mask by clicking right there, now if I hit the X key, I'm on a black brush. Now I'll just click over here on my brush tool, or you could press B 
Now what I can do is I can paint out this area with this soft brush. And so I'm not really cutting her out of a background. I'm just sort of dropping a background over her. And because it's on multiply and we have that gray background and she has dark hair, you can see that it sort of shows the strands of hair without having to go as far as having to cut her out of a background. And then what we're doing here is we're just sort of painting over that layer and we're just leaving the brick wall behind her. So if you don't like cutting people out of their background, because it can be a bit of a pain, this is one way to do it. You'll just have to take a little more care as you get to the shoulder area here. But you can see that's pretty fast and I didn't have to cut her out. And uh, that's just one trick that you can do. And uh, we could take more time and get that working better, but you can see that's pretty cool. And then what we can do too, is we can change the opacity of that layer behind her, or we can add an adjustment layer to that. So let's say I choose, um, let's check a curves layer here. Now what I'm gonna do is hit the Option key or the L key on the PC and click on that. And now that's only gonna affect the brick wall. Now what I can do is I can just sort of bring that darkness down on the brick wall. And then I can adjust that any way that I want. So that's just a simple trick there. And you can see here, I went too far on my brush. So I can hit the X key for black and or white actually in this case. So if I'm on this layer here and I can just sort of bring back some of that brick wall. But anyway, that's a cool little tip there. So what I'll do is I'll disable those two layers. And then what I'm gonna do is show you how to extract someone from the background. And I have a tutorial about that too, if you wanna check that out. So there's a couple different ways to do that. Here's one, the quick selection tool. And this doesn't always work that great. And it really depends a lot on the image, but this is gonna be a fast cutout. I know a lot of people like to cut people out of their backgrounds. Now, the only issue I see here is her hair. So what I would do is if I hold the option or alt key on the PC, if I just take that off where the gray is appearing there, I can refine these edges and it might do a better job of cutting her hair out. So I've left those right there and that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna remove it right here and I'm gonna remove a little bit right there and that's looking pretty good. And I think I'll remove a little bit right there. So now what I can do is just refine that edge. All right, so I have a pretty rough cutout here. I'm just gonna fix this part right here. And if you wanna see more uh, in depth on this type of thing here, you can just look for one of my other videos on YouTube. And if you like this video, make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I come up with new videos all the time. And also feel free to share this on Twitter or Facebook or wherever else you want to on the web. And I also have an advanced retouching course, but anyway, let's finish this image. Okay, so I've cut that out and I'm gonna hit refine edge. Now you can choose different colors here. You can charge or choose black and you can see the cutout's not that great there. So let's do that. We're gonna do that. So now I've got this clicked and I'm just gonna refine this edge. So with my bracket keys again, I'm just gonna go over the edges where I think they need refining. So I'll start right here and I'll try to get her hair in there. And I'm just gonna go around and just sort of refine the parts that I left out. And hopefully this does a great job for us and we don't have to do anything else. So I'm just gonna paint around. Now there's different ways to do this. There's different ways to mask. So check out my channel because I'll release a few different videos on different ways to do this for you. And also I have an advanced retouching course. There's a link gonna pop up at the end of the video and I have it on the screen right now. So if you wanna check that out, it's free. It's a 20 minute tutorial on retouching and I used an advanced retouching skin technique there. Um, so that's pretty worthwhile to check out. So anyway, here we go. That's gonna cut that out there and I'm just gonna say, okay. And then what we can do is we can bring in that background again. So to, oh, you know what? I made a mistake. So I'm gonna go back, say refine edge. We've already done that. Now I'm gonna go new layer with layer mask. Sorry about that. Now we've got her with a layer mask. Now what we can do is we can just bring in that texture again, like I said before. So what I'll do is I'll just put a new layer here and I can just say command V and I'll say, uh, that should be the brick wall behind her and then command T again and we can just make that bigger. Also, we can change the color of a background too. I'll show you how to do that in another video, but I'll show you really quick. So there we go, we've got the brick wall behind her and you can see some of her hair. And like I said, if we wanted to darken that brick wall, we can just add an adjustment layer above that 
So let me just hit enter or return and I can do that again. And let's say we're going to do, um, we'll do a levels. So just to show you a different way and we're going to clip that. That's a clipping mask. You can see that arrow there. And if I want to just take the midtones down a bit, I can do that. So I can just darken down that background. We could use a uh, hue saturation. We can do all kinds of things to that background. And another thing that I can do too is I can create a, another layer. So let's just create a layer. To do that, I can click right here. I'll just move that below her there. Move that up. Now I've got white highlighted there. So if I hit Option Delete, that should fill that layer with white. And for some reason, I can't see it. Let's just see. Okay, so that's white. So there we go. We've got it there below her. Now if I wanted to change that color, hit my X key to black, and then I just hit Option Delete. And now we have black. If I want it a different color, uh, let's say we'll go with a uh, very faint kind of bluish color. We'll say maybe that'll go with her dress. I don't know. Option delete. And then we have that color. So that's a couple different ways to cut people out, change the background color. And I think that's five. I'm not sure. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, like I said, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check out my other videos. Also, there's a link popping up. That's for my free 20 minute uh, skin retouching tutorial with some advanced techniques. Make sure you check that out. I'm releasing new YouTube video tutorials every couple of days. So if you want to stay up to date, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right, I'll see you in the next video. All right, to check out my free 20 minute advanced retouching course, click on that eyeball there. To subscribe to my YouTube channel, click on the subscribe button. To check out some behind the scenes videos, click on the upper right or the lower right. So also I'm gonna have that link pop up again. Now this is for my free 20 minute advanced retouching tutorial. So go check that out.